Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the Snap-on slash TIFF ACT 7000 Digital th Thermometer and Pyrometer set. This is a four-piece set, and what you have is you have the 9-volt powered uh, digital temperature head, and then you have three different probes. You have a liquid immersion probe that's rated for up to 500 degrees. You have an air temperature probe that's rated for up to a 500 degrees continuous and 1,000 degrees intermittent, and a contact therm probe which is rated for up to 2,000 degrees which is pretty amazing. 2,000 degrees is uh, glowing steel that is glowing almost a bright white. It's extremely hot and it's actually pretty impressive. This is actually a pretty common kit. I've seen a few, quite a few of these used and on eBay there is actually several of these sets. Uh, there's even placeholders on Amazon. And these really are a TIF brand set that was, you know, relabeled for Snap-on, and that's actually pretty common with Snap-on. The reader head is actually pretty simple. It's just a reader box. It has a, a way of doing base calibration as well as just a heavy-duty switch to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then it uses uh, not just telephone cable, but this would be handset telephone wire. So if you have uh, on an old landline phone, there would actually be two different widths of phone cable. One width is for the handset to the actual telephone base and then the, a slightly wider one is what would connect it to the wall. And so this uses the narrow type handset telephone cable which I thought was kind of interesting. And these really are a TIF brand which is funny because it's the AC, snap on ACT 7000 but if we look inside there we can actually see that it's a TIF 7000. I thought that was kind of amusing. And we'll go ahead and just get the battery in there right now. The battery does last for a long time. Even though it has pretty quick response rates, the temperature sensors themselves need to spend a few seconds in whatever medium that you're attempting to measure for them to be able to give you an accurate reading. So they kind of mislead you with the advertising a little bit by telling you that it's a uh, super fast response. There we go. The battery cover is a little bit funky to slide in and out of there. So you just plug in the probe, connect it to touch it to what you want, and then you just turn it on. If it says, you know, negative zeros, that means that the temperature probe is broken. So let's go and take a quick look at these probes, and we'll, you know, give them a quick test and demonstration. Let's just go ahead and start off with this air temperature probe, and I'll zoom in. They actually have a pretty good manual. It really describes everything about these. It talks about the air temperature probe. If you just let it sit somewhere, then it will just... Uh, heat soak and tell you what the ambient air temperature is. I kind of like that it has this little tube so you can get airflow to go through it and it kind of blocks any kind of cross flow so you might use this in a variety of things. HVAC uh, professionals would use this to determine uh, you know exact air temperatures coming out of vents. You would also use this in automotive purposes to also measure the air temperature because many air conditioning systems that are working properly will tell you on a if it's 80 degrees outside, then the air conditioning set on max should blow a particular temperature on the inside. It will also allow you to measure various, you know, all sorts of various air temperatures. And I'm sure even gas temperatures, but they don't tell you what the probe is made out of, so you have to be careful. What they also tell you is that it's a four thousandths piece of wire so that it is more accurate in heat soaks. But that it is obviously quite delicate. And what I also find interesting is it is twisted, and I'm not exactly sure why. I've never understood temperature probes besides that they're essentially a specialized piece of wire, and the resistance changes depending on the temperature, and that's what these units read. Now, the other probe here is the contact probe, and they talk about this. It has a special wand. The, pro the actual ceramic element is kind of spring-loaded, just hung by the wires. And that's actually intentional because when you press it against the surface, it ensures that the actual probe element is physically in contact with what you're trying to measure. And then the tube around it kind of blocks it so it doesn't get artificially cooled off. And this would be, since it's rated for 2,000 degrees, you could just touch very hot things such as exhaust manifolds. Uh, technically, you could have an orange getting the red hot piece of steel and you could just touch it right to that red hot piece of steel and have it tell you that it's 1,500 degrees. Although they do tell you, also tell you in the manual that it can take up to 10 seconds for this to stabilize. What I find interesting is they have like a base calibration for this unit. Well, before I get into that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the uh, immersion temperature probe. And I already have it partially disassembled to show you inside one of these units. So this is a genuine Teflon installation on this immersion probe. 
And if we zoom in here, we can see that it has yet an inch, another interesting style where the whole probe is two, you know, I'm sure special types of wire that are special lengths. And then they're just brazed together at the tip. And then just the ch changing of temperature gives you a different uh, or different res resistance value. And of course, it would display that. And so the immersion probe is actually really handy because then, you know, you can drop it into all sorts of liquids. You know, although I generally wouldn't use this for cooking, obviously you could. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that if this base unit has a good calibration, but each pro one of the probes for some reason has started to get out of calibration, they all have these little pop-out windows. And I wanted to open one of these up to show inside that many temperature probes are just a simple like type K thermal couple. Where these, they actually have a much more complicated circuit inside them. Here we are. This one's a little funky because the wire is very stiff in this probe. But you can see that there's a potentiometer that's been glued. And then there's one under that little window that you can adjust. And there's a few little circuits, a little transistor there. And so I thought that was interesting about this set as each of the probe handles has a little board in it. Let me go and put this together and then we'll just check them out. Alrighty, so connecting this is pretty simple. I actually have to replace this little phone cord because one of the things broke off. But I kind of like the ease of using a phone cord. And just connect it up and it's already pretty accurate. And you just touch it and voila. Measures the temperature. It's always kind of nice. As you can see, the immersion probe takes a while to heat up. And I won't be able to get it much above 98 degrees for obvious reasons. Now if we go ahead and try the air temperature probe. The reason I won't be able to heat it up above 98 degrees is because the temperature of the human body is 98 degrees. Whoop, here we go. And so there's the air temperature probe. So as I was breathing on it, what's nice about this air temperature probe is since the wire is only four thousandths of an inch thick, it's truly a high response. It's near real time, and that's a, definitely a pretty good or pretty big advantage. And then of course the contact throw probe, and we'll do that. There we go. And here's the contact probe. Let's see if I have something warm. To, here we go. I have LED lighting. We'll just touch it to one of the heat sinks here. Through the contact probe. And people thought LED lights rang cool. We can already see this heat sink is above 125. 130 degrees. That's a hot light bulb. Although this is nowhere near as hot as an incandescent bulb. Those would be hundreds of degrees. So that's really how this operates. It's really pretty basic. What makes this whole set such an advantage is just that you get these three different probes, which pretty much will cover almost every form of temperature reading that you may need. The fact that they're actually pretty common, and you can find probes and these kits uh, pretty readily online, at least on eBay. And the fact that they have two different levels of being able to achieve proper calibration uh, means that you can really keep them going for a long time. And since they're all pretty good sensors, the manual advertises that uh, below two, 250 degrees, it's plus or minus one single degree. And throughout the entire range, even on this one where it's up to 2,000 degrees, there'll be no more than 2% deviation, which is pretty good. And where I find myself using this most is I have one of those, you know, infrared, non-contact temperature or thermometers. And those work pretty well. But oftentimes, you know, if like in an engine bay, you can get like a general heat temperature, but you can't tell that, wow, you know, cylinder one is running 100 degrees hotter than the other three cylinders. Very difficult to do without a temperature sensor like this. Because you're getting a real temperature reading off of a specific point, uh, spot. And last but not least, you don't want to use these around live electrical circuits or anything like that because they are metal and there is a sh potential shock hazard. The other thing I would mention is that 
These are not tools, and they actually make a point of that in the manual, so they're probably, I have had to replace quite a few of these, particularly the contact type. The manual really emphasizes don't use it as a scraper, don't wrap it against stuff, any of that kind of, you know, treat them delicately. And on that point, with the immersion sensor and the heavy gauge stiff wire, I'm pretty sure that it doesn't like really being bent and unbent so much. I am pretty sure as the wire fatigues in this, that this is probably going to be the sensor that you end up calibrating the most often. Just because there, I'm sure the resistance will change as you fatigue the wire. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to do. And you have two other probes which are also matching. So you can just make it read the same temperature as these two probes. And that's always a nice thing about a set like this is that you can just do comparative calibration and it's always pretty good. Anyway, that was my quick review of the uh, Snap-on TIFF uh, 7000 series pyrometer set. Really appreciate everybody watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.